This module covers important information you need to be aware of concerning hazardous materials on your rig. It also discusses hot work and the job of a fire watcher. You should know that your company has a hazardous communication policy, which is usually called HAZCOM. One reason for HAZCOM is that your work puts you in contact with various chemicals and substances that may be hazardous to your health. For example, this sack of caustic, when added to the rig's mud system, gives the mud the properties it needs to do its job. It's a hazardous material and is labeled as such. Caustic is not the only hazardous mud material. Here's another one. Notice that it too has a label that clearly identifies it as hazardous. You'll use solvents on the job as well, for instance, to clean pipe threads. It's clearly labeled to tell you what it is and what its hazards are. The fuel the rig's engines use, usually it's diesel, is not only hazardous because it is combustible, but also because prolonged exposure to it may irritate your skin, eyes, and lungs. As part of your company's HASCOM policy, and to keep you informed of the hazardous materials you may encounter, your company maintains a readily available binder or book that contains Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDS for short. Learn where the MSDS is located for your job site. An MSDS exists for the hazardous substances you may come into contact with at your drill or work site. For example, this is an MSDS for number two diesel fuel, the stuff the rig engines run on. Typically, it gives the manufacturer's name, address, and phone numbers. It also gives synonyms for the fuel, other names it might go by. An important part is the hazards and precautionary measures section. For instance, it shows that diesel can irritate the skin and that it should not be swallowed because it can damage lungs. In general, an MSDS names and identifies the product, providing an emergency overview, information on the ingredients, health effects, first aid measures, personal protective equipment required, firefighting measures, accidental release measures, plus additional informative sections. When you want to know more about any material you handle, don't hesitate to look it up in the MSDS binder. That's what it's for. Pay particular attention to the section on personal protection. For diesel fuel, for example, the MSDS notes that respiratory protection, gloves and arm protection, and eye protection may be needed. Further, it recommends an eye wash station and a quick drenched shower be provided in case of contact. Hot work is another item you need to know about. Hot work is welding, metal cutting, or grinding, any job that makes sparks or creates high temperatures that could start a fire. To carry out hot work on the rig, the welder or person doing the work that makes sparks must obtain a hot work permit. The permit includes such things as the time and date, place of use, hours the job will occur, location of the work, the kind of work, and so on. In cases where hot work occurs outside a designated safe area, the company assigns a fire watcher. A fire watcher is trained to assist the welder in inspecting and preparing a work site that is outside the safe welding area before beginning work. A fire watcher also gets firefighting equipment ready to use. When everything is ready, the watcher signs a hot work permit, which allows the work to begin. During the work, the fire watcher continually monitors the work site and nearby areas for hazards. What's more, the fire watcher or anyone in the vicinity shouldn't look directly at the flame or arc of the welding torch. For one thing, it distracts the watcher from being alert to hazards. For another, the arc or flame can burn the eyes. After the hot work is finished, the watcher remains on duty for at least 30 minutes to an hour to make sure no small, hard-to-see sparks have started a fire. Keep in mind that over the course of your work on the rig, your supervisors are not only going to give you on-the-job training, but also emergency training as well. For instance, these crew members are assembled for an emergency drill. Your supervisor will point out that each person has a specific place to go and specific actions to take in an emergency.